These Thanksgiving videos have been so much fun to do, but one thing you always need to have at Thanksgiving is a good side. And while I like to make sides, there is one thing that every time we went to grandma's house, she had to me the best mashed potatoes. And we all always said it. And really what's amazing is when I asked you what ingredients you put in, you have it right here. You always said milk. And butter. And butter. And that is it. And somehow you got the fluffiest potatoes. So this is my dad's mom. And we happen to be actually in the house that I knew that they always lived in growing up. You moved into this house. When you were eight months old. And when I was eight months old. So you and mom and dad. Switched homes. Switched homes. They moved into at that time, the generational farm home mm -hmm. that great grandma and grandpa moved into. And then grandma and grandpa moved in here. And so I moved in here. 10 years ago now, about. Oh, bro, I know yeah, time goes fast. <laughs> it does. So this is, to me, kind of a very normal thing that you would have us over at every holiday. You had us at Thanksgiving, at Christmas. You even did Mother's Day. Valentine's Day. Sometimes you did Valentine's Day. And she would always Easter. do special different things, the traditional meats at each one, and often mashed potatoes because all of us grandkids loved mashed potatoes and bread. And that was often the thing I would get my, a look from my mom or dad to say, stop eating those now. Because I would have multiple servings. So to start, we, how do you always do your mashed potatoes? You always peel them first? I always peel them. Okay. And we just did regular russet potatoes. You don't... That's what I use. You don't use a special type of... I know some people get really into trying... There are some that prefer different kinds, but I used to have a garden and I, whatever I planted, I would use. You just always used? Okay. So you always used to use probably... You always had a big garden growing up. Mm -hmm. I mean, you had a very big garden and would grow most of your own things, which is why it's so normal to me to still do that because grandma... Both my grandmas, my mom, they all did that. So to me, this is just so normal. So we're going to start peeling these. We washed them. Mm -hmm. And is there anything special that you do you look for if there's a bad spot or... Well, yeah, I always cut those off. Just there. cut them out mm -hmm. and then... Mm -hmm. Otherwise, peeling is pretty simple. Grandma brought her own potato peeler, which is a kind of a smart thing to do. If you are used to something special, you just want to use what you're used to. So really to peel them, there is nothing special. You will get these little divots. So do you keep peeling or do you go in and just kind of... I usually go in and get them out. Like with like the end of it? No, I usually use a knife. Oh, use a knife, okay. So we're gonna sit here, we're gonna peel about five pounds of potatoes and we're just gonna cook them. So we're finishing peeling these up. Grandma likes to use a knife and she's just cutting out as I peel it. See how you get these divots and they still have that little bit of peel in them. That's why you, they're the eyes of the potato. So that's a lot of times where they would sprout when you're gonna plant them. So she uses a knife. You can also use the end kind of just of your peeler that sometimes has it. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over, and you know, I didn't even think of this, honestly. I don't make mashed potatoes that much, but grandma was making a comment that she always now rinses them off because as you can see, all that dirt and kind of the specks from, I'll let you finish that one up all the dirt and specks from just the peel that's on them, us touching them, even though I washed them, they're like that. So while she finishes that last one, I'll just come over and rinse those off. So I rinsed them and now they're just ready. And what do you do to them at this point? I cut them lengthwise. So why don't we leave them whole when we cook them? Because it takes too long to cook. Okay. And they would, I guess, probably cook unevenly a little bit too, certain ones. And if I cut them like oh, this... Oh, you cook them in then... quarters. Okay. Uh -huh. Oh, you don't even have to do it beyond that. You just cut them in quarters and you're done? Like this. Oh, that's kind of nice. Guys, I'm learning a lot too. Well, I've actually never I made mashed potatoes I think a lot of people do it in chunks, but I don't. Yeah. I don't know why I do it this way. Well, that's actually... Yeah, that makes a big difference though. And it actually makes it a little bit easier. I mean, you don't have to then... I think that they cook just well, you know, better maybe, but that just might be on my idea. No, I think that makes sense. Um, you've been making them for how many years now? So I think you would know by now. Well, you know, Grandpa and I are going to be married 62 years tomorrow. We'll have our, our 62nd wedding anniversary. 62 years. That's unbelievable. That goes fast. That's unbelievable. That's, yeah. So was it the day you got married? Was it snowy? Was it warm? Yeah, it was nice like this. Was it really? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's that kind was. of neat. Right now we're having, it's like 70 some degrees out, sunny. We went on our honeymoon and we, I just oh. wore a lightweight coat because it was so warm. Wow. And you went, if I remember right, you went down to Lake of the Ozarks? Lake of the Ozarks. Mm -hmm. That's kind of funny. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of amazing that we're having the same weather. So that's all you do. 
You just slice them up into quarters. And grandma was just mentioning, I do this too. She cuts towards herself like this, which a lot of people would be worried about. And if you're not, don't do it if you haven't cut a lot, but I don't know if I grew up watching her, I don't know where I did it too, but I'm the same way. I always cut towards myself, which isn't probably the proper way, but. So now we're gonna take them over to the stove and we're gonna, I assume you cover them with water or uh, what do you do? Not, not clear full, no. You, sh you tell me how much water you put on because then I'll do that too. Add enough in the bottom. That's plenty, thank you. Oh, that's it? Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. I am learning a lot. And then do you cover them or? I put a little salt on them. Okay. And then I cover them. So about a teaspoon maybe? Oh, I'd put a little more than that on. Okay. For that amount. Okay, now I cover And then them. cover them. Okay, so mm -hmm. we're gonna let it come to a boil? Boil and then put it on simmer until it's done cooking. This is easy enough, okay. So grandma's gonna check the potatoes. They've been cooking, and what do you check for? Just just the softness to see if they're ready to. Yeah, so I think like, they are. You think they're good? Yeah. That really doesn't take that long. No. This only took probably, you know, 20, 30 minutes to get the potatoes right. done. You just want, I assume, no resistance, because then that probably is what causes lumps, I assume, is if you have some hard pieces yeah, still right. in the potatoes. That's right. Now so, you have to uh, cover the top. I have to make, oh, you didn't do that. I'm just gonna that drain works. them here. And now you wondered, and you mentioned about saving the water. And so what do you always save the water for? Well, the water has a lot of vitamins in it. They're nutrients from the potatoes. And I use it um, when I make rolls. It makes very good rolls. So you always do cinnamon rolls, you use that water. Cinnamon rolls. So I guess it would probably have some of that starchiness then in it too. Yeah. That would, huh. I've always heard, do you put potato then in your roll too? Well, if you don't have to mash potatoes, sometimes I use instant mashed potatoes. You do if that I do even. Not have, if I do not have the- The things I'm learning. If I do not have the water, potato water, then I do mashed potatoes. So you mentioned that at one time you used to do this by hand when you mashed them. Yes. That would have been a lot of work. 62 years ago. <laughs> not six. Oh, yeah, actually when you first got married, you probably... <laughs> that's okay, wow, that's right. I, I think of you as being 62. So. In, instead now, what you do is you just use a hand mixer? Hand mixer, you put it okay. in there. Mm -hmm. So we can put these right in here. Sometimes though, I, if I was um, making a roast in the oven or something, yeah. then I would use this for the gravy, and that makes good gravy. Oh, so you could even then, I guess you could probably even use it in I'll a soup this if you wanted so to. so you can put that on there so it don't get Oh, here, we'll just set both of them down the sink and then. Okay, let me do this for you. There we go. So the two things that go into your mashed potatoes are just milk. And butter. And butter. And you kind of, I'm guessing, just go by eye a little bit? I do. So do you start by mixing them first, or what's the first just step for you? Just a little bit, and then I put the butter in. Okay, so I will start mixing, then you can decide how much butter you put in. Okay. It's kind of a nice thing to do here first because it kind of gets all that extra steam off mm -hmm. a little bit, so it helps them dry out a little bit more. So to start with, usually, how much butter do you like to try to start by putting in? Well, I will start with... I cut it up a little bit so it's not all in one area. It's room temperature butter, so that just makes it easier. It's going to melt in easier. It's slightly softened. Mm -hmm. I think I'll put this whole thing in. Okay. And that'll be all we need. And now, as the milk is pretty well melted in there. It's getting there. Okay. You could shut it off and let it melt if you want to. So you always make sure that it kind of goes through a melting stage mm -hmm. a little bit. Mm -hmm. Ooh, this Do you have a good. spatula? I do. Here we go. I'll let you kind of check it. We have the master here. Yeah, see that's what melted in nice. Now we'll put, we'll put the warm milk in it. And that's just all by eyeball for you? All by eyeball. We just warmed it up slightly on the stove. We didn't scald it. We didn't let it boil or anything, just slightly. Mm -hmm. It's kind of nice to do this with two people. And you have to kind of scrape over the side of the Oh, for the, to get it, to get it worked down Yeah, in. you kind of have I'll to keep doing that. I'll let you scrape it. 
See how nice they're getting soft? That is getting really nice. Mm -hmm. I just do. I always think yours are just so oh, much better. I think it's because you grew up knowing grandma make your teeth for you. <laughs> True. <laughs> this was the grandma that we did all the fun things with. So she lived across the road practically. So we would come over and we would go on daily bike rides sometimes around what we called the block, which was really four miles. Four miles. It wasn't a, it was our version of a block, but it wasn't, it was four miles. And then we would also always bake cookies with you every day at 10 o'clock. Grandma would have break for grandpa and dad who would work together every day on the farm. And if my sister and I were home, we sometimes would come and it seemed so special because grandma would have pop and it would be name brand pop. In Iowa, we call it pop, also known as soda. But she would have all the name brands and the good flavors. So it was always so special to come over here and make cookies with her. Or honestly, what I loved you used to do when you had leftover mashed potatoes. I only remember this a few times, but you would have us sometimes over for supper in an evening and you would make potato pancakes. Do you mm -hmm. remember that? Mm -hmm. You would just take some of these. And then I'd put a little cheese in the middle. <laughs> the cheese, yellow cheese in the middle. And they would do them on like an electric skillet or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then they would just, they were such a special little treat. And she would and always do that with zucchini too. Side, and then, oh. they, then they were. They uh, were so good. Mm -hmm. And it was only like, if I think you had mashed potatoes left over from something probably. That's right, that's right. But just once in a while, uh -huh. Okay, let's try it, see how that goes. That's looking pretty good. Do you ever pretty put black good. pepper in it? No, I haven't, but okay. you know, I think it would be Oops. all right. It would be all well, right. Well, no, they're kind of nice and simple like this. But I'm just going to put a little bit more water on this thing. So what it, do you look for gets, when you're adding? It does get stiff, you know? It keeps soaking it in, kind of? Is mm -hmm. that what it does? Yeah. So these are something you want to make right before your meal? That's right. Because if you do, it gets stiff. Yeah. Kind of like if you've ever had a leftover mashed potato the day after. Yeah. They're a little bit different. Which I always think, I always, leftover mashed potatoes are really good for soups. Like a mashed potato soup is really good. Mm -hmm. Or like grandma would make those pancakes. There's different things you can do with them. Also the day after, you could probably doctor them up with like, um, make it more of a casserole, like with oh, cream sure. cheese and oh, things like that. Oh, you can use leftover in several ways, yeah. See, that's getting to look pretty good. Just look at, I think this is what's amazing though. See, this is what you're looking for. You're looking for those nice peaks. It's fluffy, it's light, it's almost creamy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This, this for me really does. It, it reminds me just exactly of any like good meal we would have over here at grandma's. She would always just make good food, homemade food, a lot of it she would grow <laughs> in the garden. Yeah. And one of the odd things I always remember too is the um, snicker tapioca. Yes, I haven't made that for a while because I, I don't have it. that much uh... reason to. Well, at that, you know, cold salads growing up, especially in the Midwest, we always had cold salads with like whether it was a jello salad or a tapioca mm -hmm. salad. Mm -hmm. And grandma would make, especially when we were younger, snicker tapioca. It was a almost pudding like tapioca that would have yeah, chunks that? of big snicker. That That's good? beautiful. I think just to finish it here, we should put it into a bowl just so you can see what it would look like if you serve it. It just has a beautiful texture to it. Oh, it <laughs> this is one of those things that you can't really go wrong with. Just a homemade mashed potato. All right. You just remember that as a child in the I olden do. days. <laughs> I do in the old days. I'm not that old. <laughs> well, I don't think I'm that old. And when you were a child. When I was a child. That's that. right. That's, That's right. That yeah. Way. That's yeah. right. It was. But I still always say I had a growing up on a farm is a special type of childhood. You, you, you're just especially when you have family close by like a grandma and grandpa. You're able just to have so many luxuries that you don't view as a luxury until you're older. Every morning I would remember grandpa coming over on his four wheeler to start the day, and yeah, you guys were always close by. If mom and dad ever That's did it. go away, we'd get automatic babysitters. I think we need to try it. Just to make sure, which at the end you would probably always try it yes, anyway. Yes, I would have done it before. Just because yeah. mm -hmm. if you need to, you could always add more, add salt, more salt or, That's but right. these are both clean spoons, so. Mm. Those are really good. <laughs> you get the creaminess. You get the little bit of butter in there. Just right seasoned. So it's the perfect thing for gravy. If it's Thanksgiving, you can make a good gravy. Use this potato water. That's good to know. I'm going to have to do that this year. That's kind of exciting. So. I hope you enjoy this too. You may not have one of the best grandmas to be able to make them with or learn from, but now you can learn from my best grandma here and exactly how to make mashed potatoes. It's simple. Ingredients yes. that you can find anywhere. Mm -hmm. Nothing really that takes a lot of work, just a little bit of time. 
a lot of extra love. So share this around, try this out. I love to see when you share them because that really helps me. And I hope you try them because guys, Thanksgiving may be different this year, but you can still make delicious homemade food no matter where you're at or who you're with. So go make some mashed potatoes, enjoy them, and make sure your grandma knows how much you love her. <laughs>